Hi there. In this video, I'll be looking at this visualizer, the OKOCAM S from Okio Labs. Both small in size and price, but how does it actually perform? Let's take a look. Now, another dinky little visualizer here then, and it's nice to see a few notes and getting started in the back of the box. If only I'd read them, then I wouldn't have had to re-record the unboxing, which explains why the school shirt is replaced by a t-shirt at this point. Anyway, inside the box, you'll find the OKOCAM S itself together with a quick start guide. Once everything's out of the box, setting up is pretty straightforward. Just detach the camera arm from the base, the side marked store, then plug it into the other side marked use. It's then a case of lifting up the arm and unfolding the base. So it's not going to take you very long to get up and running. The base plate itself is magnetic, which helps it stay together when folded, but it's certainly easy enough to unfold and is large enough to give the OKOCAM S a stable platform. Next, plug the attached USB cable into your computer and choose one of the five different configurations. This is standard mode. Rotating the camera so that the lens faces you is selfie mode. Pushing down on the arm so that the camera is much closer to your subject is macro mode. And if you want to get the base out of the way, then you can push it underneath the laptop and turn the arm for laptop mode. There is one final mode, but I'll show you that later on in the video. Let's see some of the features of the OKOCAM S then. It has four buttons for decreasing the camera's exposure, increasing exposure, adjusting focus, exposure and white balance automatically, and flipping the image 180 degrees for when you want to use selfie mode. There's also a tripod mount and a connector which makes it easier for left-handed people to use. The camera arms might look a little flimsy, but are actually glass fibre reinforced. Next up, the technical details. The Okio Cam S that we're looking at has a 3 megapixel sensor. Spend a little bit more in the Okio Cam T and that's upgraded to 5 megapixels. You'll be able to get as close as 9.9 centimeters away from your subject and still stay in focus. And you can expect up to 30 frames per second output. The maximum capture area is 240 by 325 millimeters, which is enough to view an A4 sheet of paper with room to spare. It weighs in at a diminutive 269 grams and it's budget friendly at only 64 pounds or thereabouts. There's no built-in microphone and the OKOCAM S has no lights to illuminate your subject. As always, I like to test each visualizer with third-party software to get an idea of just how well it performs with Zoom, Teams meetings and the likes. The image was certainly clear and in focus Although I think you can tell that the sensor has one of the lowest resolutions of the visualizers I've tested. Tell me what you think of it in the comments section below. I realized at this point that not all of the buttons were responding, but this just meant that I had to update the OKOCAM's firmware, which was certainly straightforward. If you're buying an OKOCAM now, the firmware will probably be pre-installed, saving you a job. There are three main apps for the OKOCAM S and T, as well as add-ons for Google Slides, Google Docs, Google Forms and Google Sheets. This is the OKOCAM Snapshot and Recorder app on PC, which does exactly what its title says, allows you to take snapshots and record videos of your subject. Controls are pretty basic and let you zoom in and out as well as rotate the image, alter the exposure, freeze the image and adjust the camera's focus, exposure and white balance automatically. Under settings, you can change the camera's resolution, where files are saved, the aspect ratio and quality of recorded video and so on. There's no way at present of adding annotations, highlighting part of an image or magnifying only part of an image as you'll find in software supplied by some manufacturers. So how good are the recordings produced by the app? Let's find out. This one was recorded at 16 to 9 aspect ratio and standard quality, 1280 by 720 pixels. Let's listen in. Two amps and therefore I have to work at the resistance of a resistor using your Ohm's law. Therefore, I'd be rearranging the equation to give R as the subject by dividing both sides by I, because me R is V over I, the voltage across the resistor divided by the current in the resistor gives me the resistance of the resistor, five ohms. So, so with no built-in microphone, the sound quality will only ever be as good as the microphone in your own computer, if you have one. Quality is not bad, but the main issue I have is that the video files are output in WebM format. In order to edit this clip, I had to convert it from WebM format to MP4, which is an additional hassle. 
If I wanted to use the OkioCam S to record video then, personally, I'd use the app OBS. Now, this is the fifth and final way that you can set up your OkioCam in first person view mode. I've got it set up like this because I wanted to try out the OkioCam Stop Motion app. Again, there are only a handful of controls, but it does have the option of onion skinning so that you can see the last position of the objects you're moving. Because of its low price, the OkioCam S could be an inexpensive way to get into stop motion video, but I want to compare it to the Hue HD Pro first, which just happens to be the subject of my next video. In summary then, the OkioCam S is a good little performer, especially given its price. It's very portable, although I would have liked to have seen the inclusion of a carry bag or cover. It works well with third party apps, where the four buttons come in handy in order to get your image optimised. The OkioCam software is a bit basic for my liking though, with no option to add annotations and outputting videos in WebM format is a hassle, if you want to go on and edit them or make them widely available. If these features aren't important to you though, then the OkioCam S could be a good fit for you in the classroom, teaching online or producing those stop motion blockbusters. If this video has been useful to you, then why not give it the thumbs up? For now though, that's us. See you next time.